Carol here. Welcome to my craft room this evening. Today we're going to use the Butterfly Basics Stampin' Up set and all Stampin' Up products actually. The card stock will be my 140 pound and my 90 pound white. That's what I'll be doing here. This piece is four and a half by two inches and I'm going to do a stacked stamping technique. And it's quite a nice technique because it blends itself together as you uh, stack it up on the front of your card base. Now, as we all know, I don't like white card stock. It's very difficult for me to leave anything white. And this card changed midstream like it usually does. So anyway, I'm using Stampin' Up! card stock in the navy. And I also cut a piece three and a half by two and a half along with that four and a half by two I'm just writing it out and a piece two and one eighth by two and one eighth and then I'm going to put a backing on each piece with this uh, navy card stock. You only want to put a thin piece showing on the backing because you're going to be stamping over the white card stock so you don't want to have too much showing as far as the color behind your main white stamping piece so um, it's easy to cut it out because you're just going to line it up just so it snuggles in and shows a little bit of the uh, navy blue cardstock and it worked out perfectly here and it was uh, it's been some time since I've made a card actually as we all know because I was doing a lot of different projects over Christmas and I decided today to get out all my Stampin' Up! products, use a set that I've never used before which is this Butterfly Basics stamp set. It's a photopolymer set and it's lovely. I wanted to do this overlay stamping as well and I wanted to do it on the inside of the card so that's why I cut those pieces out. And I love working with photopolymer and Stampin' Up!'s photopolymer sets are beautiful. And this is my Prick Double Stick Adhesive and I'm going to put a little bit on the back of the white here so that I can use my uh, Versamark and the tiny butterfly in this set which has script behind it which is just beautiful. So I'm just putting it all over trying to overlap it on the edges of the actual uh, white cardstock here so that it just gives it a nice look when you put it back together. I like the ultra fine embossing powder. I use the white on the butterflies and uh, it resists when you put your ink down and I'm going to use quite dark inks on this which uh, when you see it in uh, the middle of the card you'll understand why I have to change it up. But we'll keep going here. So I'm just putting a bit, yeah, I'm wiping it off. And then we're going to heat set it. And this is exactly how it would be put back together. But it will have that uh, frame of the navy cardstock behind it. That's why you want it to be very, very uh, minute sticking out from the white cardstock. So now we're going to use this uh, really nice uh, burn and I'm going to use two Stampin' Up! inks here. I'm going to use the light one to start out with and then I'm going to rock it into the darker green on the sides just to give it some dimension. And I'm going to sit situate it on here. I was going to say set it on here. Both ways work, don't they? And, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, now I'm going to put some clear embossing powder over it because of the dark cards, uh, excuse me, the dark ink I'm going to put over it. I want it to resist on here as well. So I'll take it and I'll just rock it in the dark after I have set it on the light. I'll move it down just a little bit. And then we have our greenery. So I'll put some embossing powder excuse me, I'll put some powder on that, a clear embossing powder, and heat set it, and we're on our way to making a vintage Butterfly Basics card. Doesn't it always end up vintage for me? It's either shabby chic or vintage. 
I tried to make it clean and simple, but it just did not work out. <laughs> that's okay, because that's what I do, right? Now we're going to move on to the flower, and I am using some of the Stampin' Up! bright uh, red, like a pink red. I think it's Primrose Lane or something like that. I, I show you all the colors at the uh, end of the video. And then I am going to rub some off and I'm going to use both greens on the leaves, just tapping it on like this. And you'll know why I wasn't really fussy with this later on in the video. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this card was something, I tell you what. Um, you know when you go in your craft room and you just, you have this vision of a card and it changes up on you. Well, that's what this one did. But I had good intentions, so I kept going because you know I never throw out a card. If I get frustrated with it, I just walk away and then I come back. And that's what I had to do with this card. Yes only being honest with you here and I'm using my new editing program so you're you've got a double whammy here today <laughs> me trying to use the new editing program and changing up this card so I put some clear embossing powder on this flower as well because of the resist factor of wanting to put two dark inks on there and it was the blueberry no the um, I, it was like a burgundy Bliss or something like that and uh, and the Old Navy so what I had to do here was a little bit of it I wanted to Copic color because it had a lot of empty spaces and I wanted it to have uh, just some dimension to it so I colored it in but you will see once again that's the reason why I didn't tell you the Copic colors right here because I end up fussy cutting and doing a three-dimensional card later on. Oh yes, this is a different card. So let's start here. I'm using the, um, I start out with the old navy, I think it's called, or uh, it's the dark, dark blue. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm doing this quite late and that's why I didn't put, generally I put the colors up for you on the screen, but this new editing system, I'm telling you, it's challenging and I'm just thankful that I have got this under my time limit. <laughs> yes, not feeling well and trying to learn an editing program can put one over the edge. <laughs> not really. I enjoyed this card. I really do. And I love challenging cards. I love making a mess of my card and fixing it up. Isn't that weird? I really do. I like going in one direction and then it doesn't look right. So you have to come up with all these new ideas. And it's challenging to your creative mind to uh, either put them in the trash bin and forget it, or, which I'll never do, or just take your time and work around it. And it always ends up better in the long run. I just want to encourage you, never throw a card out. Because as you can see here, look at this, I'm, do, I'm going with that Blackberry Bliss or whatever the name of this is, <coughs> excuse me, on here. Um, look at, yeah, I'm looking at it, setting it over there. I'm not even worried about it. I can tell it's really dark and it's going to go on white card stock. So here's where I start to panic just a little bit. I'm thinking to myself, okay, look at this. Now my butterflies are pink. But I'm going to leave that alone because I know that little, I buy these little alcohol wipes at my pharmacy. You get a hundred of them for a couple of dollars, not much. You can get them at your dollar store as well. And uh, so now I'm going to put my double-sided runner on here, my tape runner, and I'm going to put it down. Then I'm going to worry about... Uh, getting the um, white nice and white. It's kind of like putting your whites in the washing machine and they don't come out right because you didn't add Javex, right? They didn't come out as white as you like. Well, these didn't either, but I went over and my hands, oh my, look at them. I'm trying to even get some of the ink off my hands, but I use this little wee packet of an alcohol wipe and it takes the ink immediately off of your 
uh, white embossing powder. It will take the resist, the ink off of your resist. So now I am going to uh, start with the underneath portion. Now here's where it just went totally in a different direction. Here's where it went a little vintage um, at the beginning and then it just went total vintage after that. But they had this uh, like chicken wire little uh, piece of uh, rectangle photopolymer stamp in this set and so I just put it all over the place uh, so that it would give me something where the eye could not rest on that dark color that I'm going to put on top. Then I took a sponge and I'm taking some, I think it's called crumb cake and then the other one is an older stamp. I have Stampin' Up! inks, excuse me, from years ago, years and years ago, um, that I can't get rid of because I love the colors. And uh, it was just a darker brown version on the top of this. So you can see where it's resisting because I put clear embossing powder on this uh, chicken wire stamp that I put on here. And when my hand gets out of the way, you'll see it. I'm trying to really rub on this because I'm thinking it's going to be a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card, but that changes up. So now I'm going to go to the darker because when I put that, the darker ink, when I put that on top with the burgundy and the blue, it was not dark enough. So I grabbed this um, darker ink and you can see on top there I have a makeup applicator. I always, uh, each one of my Stampin' Up! the inks has a makeup applicator in it so that I can do the edges quickly. Yes, and I use this artist soap right here to get the ink off my fingers. You can get that at any art supply store. I'm not sure if Michael sells it. I got it at an actual art supply store. And uh, now we're going to set this down and you can see that this is way too dark. The actual um, triple stamping here, it looked nice but that uh, crumb cake and the um, clear resist on that uh, kind of like chicken wire on the back, way too dark. And I'm looking at it and looking at it. This is where I walked away and came back. <laughs> yeah, I set it there and came back. Okay, then I thought, okay, I'm going to grab the same butterflies that I put on the resist at the beginning of the card. And it has a matching punch, which is awesome. And I used the Blackberry Bliss. I think that's what you call it. It's all coming back to me now. <laughs> and uh, then I used some of the navy. And I put that in and I punched that out. And I thought, all right, let's get some dimension on this card. Maybe that's what it needs. Oh, it needed a lot more than that. <laughs> so now I'm taking my... Um, little uh, tape and putting it on the back there and uh, yeah I put it on there I had to do three of them right so I grabbed a dark green because that matched the leaves and I've got uh, yeah I'm on a roll here I'm grabbing the roll of uh, glue dots and I had to cut them in half because they're larger glue dots I ran out of Stampin' Up! glue dots I couldn't believe it yes but as you know, I said I'm going to use stuff that's in my, I'm not ordering anything, I'm using what's in my craft room and I had these other glue dots. So I just cut them in half and I used those. And uh, anyway, so I thought, all right, I don't like just the, that just didn't work for me. So I grabbed the navy, I stamped out uh, the image of the flower that I had on there and I took off just the blossoms. And then I put my dimensionals on the back and I raised it up because I thought it needed some more white to just brighten that darkness there off. And uh, yes, it was a little tedious to fussy cut all of the blossoms on this, but it started to look good. <laughs> That's the key to the card, right? 
So I tucked it in. I added a little dimensional on the back. I cut a little piece off. And I'm telling you, this is where I started to get excited with this card because just adding that in navy with the white background made me happy. I was content and I just thought, okay, I'm going to do all of the blossoms on there. So I have that one. I think there's four of them all together. There it is there because that coloring with the Copics just didn't do it for me. I needed it to stand out and I needed some white behind there and I needed some navy and yes, but there's more. <laughs> yeah, I'm not satisfied with that either, but I'm starting to like it. I like the butterflies. I like that I fussy cut the blossoms from the set that I stamped on there. And then we're going to move forward. I'm going to set this aside right here and move to the inside. So you want to stack your two pieces. In my case, I used two layers for the inside. And then you want to stamp over the layers because it gives you that dimensional look when you add the uh, cardstock and lift it up. It really does look nice. It's such a nice technique to use two or three layers and then stamp over top. And so I did it in the navy, the flower, the same flower that's on the front that I fussy cut the blossoms out. And then I added my um, three butterflies in the same color as the front of the card. I'm going to worry about the front of the card after this because sometimes you just need to rest your mind from something you don't like and uh, move forward. So yeah, I'm tapping. Okay, what do I do now? I added the navy card stock already. See it behind there? Very thin. And that way it the stamped image runs perfectly because you just have that little edge on there. And I set that aside and I'm going back and cutting it off. <laughs> yeah, cutting it off. I'm thinking to myself, I have to add different colors to this. So let's just take it off. I'll use that cardstock for something else. Now, I thought, okay, I'm going to stamp out that flower and just fussy cut the leaves. Instead of having, the last time I stamped this image, I cut off the blossoms, but now I want to have the leaves and I want them to be three-dimensional on the outside because it will draw the eye away from the busyness of the front of the card and the darkness of the inks. So I was thinking, and it did actually, and it was a nice placement to put it over to the left and having two ferns and then this flower with the leaves to be, you know, in the rule of thirds worked out perfectly. And uh, I was really happy with it. And I don't mind fussy cutting. I really don't. If you have a nice sharp pair of scissors, it really is relaxing. And uh, I added this to the left side. I didn't, I just used uh, my Xyron to put it on. I didn't raise it up, but it did make such a difference to the card when I put it on. And then uh, here I added three different inks, my mid tone, my dark tone, my light tone, just so that it you know, had some dimension as well as the stamped image. I wanted to add some more color to it. And I really, really did like the effect when I was finished. Adding a light tone, a mid tone, a dark tone to any stamped image with your Copics, leaving some white in certain areas to give you some dimension always looks, just looks sweet, uh, especially a fussy cut image. And I didn't want to leave too much white, but I did leave some just so that it stood out. And then I am going to take my two inch Xyron and I'm going to run this fussy cut piece through there. I absolutely love my Xyrons now. Uh, I have the five inch one and I have this two inch one and I have been using them so much uh, in the last month. Uh, when I make cards because with a fussy cut image like this and gluing it 
I did not want to risk having any more mess on the front of my card. Here it is right here. It's just awesome. You just slide it down and pull it. And here's the matching 5 inch Zyron. And this comes with magnetized back and all kinds of goodies with that one. So now let's move on. I'm taking my Teflon bone folder and I'm going to really press down so that the glue sticks to the back. I peeled it off and I set it right there to the left of the card and um, it goes over top of the butterflies. That's what I liked. The butterfly, the white butterflies weren't all, um, you know, white. It gave it some dimension. It was raised up and I was happy with it. Then I grabbed a darker green to go in. I actually had four different colors on these leaves. It just needed something, uh, can you believe it, darker? <laughs> because the image is dark. And so I wanted the leaves just to have a little bit of a uh, shading that was extra dark on there and uh, I was super super happy here's where the card came together look at this beautiful bright blue card stock I absolutely fell in love with it so I grabbed my burgundy and my navy inks and I went around the edges with the sponge on the original piece to make it darker I didn't leave it light with the uh, crumb cake. I added the darkness and then I just took my Stampin' Up! cutter here and cut just a small edge around there with this gorgeous blue. It's a turquoise actually and look at that. It just popped. I was so pleased and then I thought okay I'm gonna grab some bright green cardstock next. Yes it did work. And I put some uh, double-sided tape on the back here. And I'm going to situate this piece on to this beautiful blue turquoise uh, Stampin' Up! cardstock. And look at that. What a difference it makes. And just putting the edges, um, taking a sponge and sponging color onto the corners and around all the edge of that crumb cake outer piece there behind the image made such a big difference and I was really getting excited about this card now so I grabbed this isn't this beautiful green it's so bright and vivid and it brought the Copic leaves there it just popped this is exactly what it needed I'm telling you I was so happy. Yes, this is a card I just can't wait to give away for a birthday. So I put some double-sided tape on the back. Um, I used the roll of the double-sided tape so that I knew it was going to stay on there secure. And there you have it. Look at that. The blue and the green. Was I happy? And then it just seemed to come together. So then I grabbed the inside piece now because I'm looking at it and I'm going, yep, this is exactly what I should have done at the very beginning. <laughs> but that's okay, yeah. So I added the navy and then I added a slight bit of the green on the inside. I took it apart as you can see because I thought this needs a little bit of green too. I want to match it with the front of the card and look at that beauteous and then I put my happy birthday there with the uh, that burgundy bliss or whatever the name of it is you'll see it later on in the video and I put that down that said happy birthday just making sure I get it even that's all I'd need right <laughs> to have that crooked and <laughs> I totally lose my mind but it came out straight as can be. So crazy happy here. Can you tell? So after adding the navy and the green to the back of both of these white pieces that I stacked together, I'm going to put it back onto that piece. Look at that. I just love it. I just love this technique of stamping over top of layers and then lifting it up. And the same with this piece. It's vintage. It's classy. I absolutely love it. All I have to do now is make a card. Here's the 
Hair Pizzazz, Mossy Meadow, Primrose Petals, and I don't know what Crumb Cake and Night of Navy is that. And I hope you caught the other one because I didn't. And um, you can just slow the camera down. <laughs> so now I just need to take my piece and measure my 140 pound card stock here so that I can make my own size card on here. So I just thinking to myself, all right, whatever, let's just cut it and see where it goes. And um, I love the thickness of this 140 pound cardstock resting on there. And the white popped this out. The butterflies just pow, came right off the page. I was thrilled. So I cut one piece, uh, just a quarter of an inch uh, higher on the top because I'm going to score it there and we're going to put some double-sided tape and I'm making my own card base. Because of adding those two colored layers it just put me over an A2 size card but that's okay. I love the 140 pound card stock that I uh, get at my stationery store and it's super duper thick and that's the way I like my cards. I add some double-sided tape to the quarter inch on the top then I seal it and we're going to add the front of the card base. Then we'll move to the inside and honestly, I am very happy with this card. And that's why I always say not to get discouraged when you're in your craft room and your card does not turn out. It, if you just walk away for a little bit, come back and uh, regroup, generally I'd say 100% of the time for me because I won't throw any cards out even if I make a mess out of them I try to uh, recover them and look at that I'm going to have to add my Viscars super duper cutter here because I have to add I have to remove some of the bottom off and it's two layers thick and that 140 pound cardstock folded in half it needed the Viscars cutter and I like this one because it's self-sharpening. I absolutely think it's wonderful. So I took the bottom off. Now I'm going to add some double-sided tape, cut it to fit, set it on the outside of this cardstock, and on the inside, there you go. Isn't that beautiful? Love this technique of uh, adding layers to your white card base and stamping over top of the layers. It just looks beautiful. Now I'm going to take the tape off. I'm going to put the inside of the card with the sentiment on there. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, the cough is still there. It gets worse in the evening. But um, I'm pressing forward here. Look at that. And this would make a nice clean and simple card if you did just this. Um, on the outside of a card would be nice, but I really like it to match the inside and then I take out my sequins and I'm going to match up the colors of the burgundy bliss and the navy and the bright bright green and I'm going to take my multi-medium glue and put that down I think I added seven actually uh, we will see I'm just going through the colors and I added gray black uh, the cranberry color and that bright bright green and I was super happy when the sequins went on. I just added that little bit and I used my pick stick and I wanted to just show you on my pick stick I take orthodontic wax because if you've worked with this pick stick it's hard to twist the end to get that green putty out so I just use you know being in orthodontics for so long I've had orthodontic wax around here because my grandkids had uh, orthodontic work and so I have it around. You can buy it at your uh, pharmacy or dollar store even. I've seen it in there. There's my quick stick and there's the ortho wax. I just mold it around the end. It will pick anything up. Glitter, um, you name it, it sticks to it and I like it. And I'll show you the wax that I pick up, that I buy. It's the gum wax. It comes in clear and it comes in um, white. So that's kind of nice. I thought I'd add that in there for you, for your pleasure. 
I'm telling you this is getting longer and longer, isn't it? And then I'm going to work with applying this to the front. I'm so pleased with it, even doing the editing, looking at it, I'm so glad I just stepped away from the card and started again. And there's the script underneath um, the butterflies that I put on top there that we did the uh, white emboss resist on. Doesn't look pretty. And there's the inside. One, two, three, four, five. I ended up putting five sequins on there. Now, I buy these at my stationery store. They go on sale. If a bride cancels their order, I get this box for about $7 with all of these envelopes. All of these, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous to just put inside a card to write a note if you don't want to sign your cards? And on the inside, if you want to write a little letter, um, I think it paid $7 for all of this. And you've got, uh, so check out your um, stationery stores where brides order, even at Michael's where they order their sets. If they don't pick them up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, seven sequins in there. And look at that. So pleased. Well, I'm just showing you a close up of this very long tutorial card. And thank you very much if you stuck with me. I appreciate that. I have the best subscribers. I really do. I tell everybody that. Um, I'm just so thankful for each one of you that take the time to watch my videos. Whoops, it's falling down. So now let's work on the outside of the envelope. And I'm going to put the ferns on there in three different greens. And I'm going to put the butterflies on there. Three ferns, three butterflies in different directions. This is the Burgundy Bliss. And um, yeah, and even if you wanted to mail this, even though I covered the envelope and it's beautiful quality envelope, uh, even though I do cover the envelope, you can always cut out, uh, you know, a little sticky piece, double-sided uh, on paper to put your address on. And here I'm just fussy cutting uh, the butterfly because I want to put a piece of this um, greenery on there and go over top of the butterfly. So it looks like it's behind it. And I'm going to use the pear pizzazz because it's a lighter green on this fern. And I stamp it down and wouldn't you know it, right at the end, I didn't press hard enough. And I had to just take my Copic marker and fill it in. Easy peasy. Just grab a marker of any kind. If it didn't come out near the uh, image, all you have to do is color it in, and I'm just showing you that I matched it up, and uh, it worked out perfectly. And it, actually, one of the butterflies, it was the same thing. I just didn't, I must have been tiring myself out. I didn't press hard enough onto the uh, block, but you just take a Copic marker, fill it in. So now I'm putting an even lighter piece of fern up towards the, no, I'm sorry. You know what I did here? <laughs> That's funny. I put the butterfly on one side of the stand, of the acrylic block and I put the fern on the other side. Yeah. So I was totally confused. So there I looked at it and I thought, okay, I got a little bit of ink on there and then I didn't get a really good image. So I took my blue that matched the ink with my Copics as close as I could get it and I'm making little dots. That's all you have to do is dot your image in and instead of straight coloring where you can see, you know, that you've messed up, just put tiny little dots all over and you'll never know that uh, it was a messed up image. That's what I'm doing as I'm going around it. Tiny, tiny little dots. Yeah, look at that. And uh, then, see I had a little bit of ink down there. I don't know if you can see it. But I thought, okay, I'm going to take some of the crumb cake, add a butterfly to the top, and then we're going to cover that little dot of ink right there with the crumb cake. I'm super duper happy with this card and this envelope. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Isn't that pretty? It's so shabby shaky vintage. Yes, my new name. Here at the last minute, I thought it needed to fern down there, so I didn't even put it on the block. Yeah, tired out, I just 
put it on top of the ink and it's such a good photopolymer sticky stamp that it stuck to my hands. Look at that. I just whisked a fern across there for you for your enjoyment with my new editing program. It had a wisp of ferns. Isn't that amazing that it matched? And there you have it, my friends, a matching envelope with the silver on the back. It has a sticky little flower thing to seal it from the bridal thing. And we have our card finished. As always, I really do appreciate my subscribers. Thank you for subscribing and uh, helping my channel to grow. And I look forward to doing some more tutorials this week. Have yourself a blessed new year. And I hope to see you on another tutorial soon. So take care, everybody. I put some pictures out for you to enjoy, and I'll see you on the next video.